What's up everybody, Paul Carl here. In 2023, I sold a little over $50,000 in low-end bulk common sports cards on eBay as singles and then some of them as lots. And I've done this as a part-timer, a little side gig hobby. And what, I, what I'm going to talk about in this video is the income statement, how this number breaks down. And then we're going to also talk about my thoughts about selling low-end singles in high volume and how that compares to lots and see see what we're doing in 2024 over here in uh at paul carl cards um so thanks for checking out the video let's get into it holy cow this is an excel video it's my favorite kind to of do let's uh let's look at the numbers here so this is an income statement um i'm guessing a lot of sports card sellers probably aren't doing this but i think you should you should be tracking these kind of numbers um in whatever business you're doing so that you can really have a pulse for what's going on because your intuition isn't isn't going to reflect reality it's going to reflect what you want it to be, what you want to believe so we can see how many cards i sold here units um this is all singles pretty much and then this is singles plus some lots if you've been following the channel, you know in 2023, in September, I ended 100,000 active listings on eBay and switched over to lots. And since then, I've been around 120 active listings. Uh, just trying to maintain that because the sell-through rate is so good. Um, I'm going to try to grow that this year. Um, anyway, we've got new buyers, returning buyers. This is something that was important to me to check each quarter um, just because I was trying to build up this return buyer rate. And I was doing a really good job at that. Th those thank you notes play a big role in it having good communication and good customer service plays a big role in that um, shipping well and quickly that's another part um, but the returning buyers are important because you can teach them how to use the coupon codes to so they can order more than one card uh, when they're making a purchase so you see revenue went up a little bit uh, from 36,000 in my first first full year of doing this and then uh, 50,000 in the second year so cost of goods sold, this is probably going to be higher for me than most of you guys. My cost of goods sold, this is almost 20% of revenue. Um, and the reason for this is because I, I've been doing a lot of consignment where I'm splitting uh, the profits with the people that I consign for. Um, and my I have one primary consigner. I basically, whenever I want to sell, whenever I need more cards to sell, I go and literally get a truck filled with cards and bring them back to the house, <laughs> put them in the upstairs, uh, the upstairs basement, I call it, <laughs> where all the cards are, and um, that's that's where they sit while I get them up on, on eBay. Uh, we got sales tax, the fulfillment, this is like my shipping labels. The boxes and the ink and the paper and all that kind of stuff that is later in in the supply section and then platform fees this is for like eBay fees the promoted listings um, store subscription cost that was something that went up in 2022 when I had to bump up to the um, anchor store that took me from like what it was like 60 bucks a, a month to 300 bucks a month so it's quite a jump you know you we were talking about 3600 dollars um, so like th this would be reduced to just like 10 grand if I wasn't paying for the anchor store um, which I did even when I didn't need it anymore just because I wanted it as an insurance policy if I decided that oh shit lots isn't working let me put my singles back up I wanted to still have that uh, store there to do it so you can see total cost of goods sold here and then gross profit around a little over 30% um, on average between the two um, and this, the easiest way to get this up would be to get your cost of goods sold lower. Uh, but I just, I don't have the time or the, like the desire and patience to go out and source cards and to source them in the quantity that I need is, would be like, it just, it's just too much with, with my two girls and my, my like actual main business job. <laughs> Um, I, I can't be out there running around trying to haggle with people and like try to explain to them that their, you know, 1992 tops Ken Griffey Jr. card isn't worth $500 and I don't want to do all that. I don't have the time for it. So this setup where I can just go get a truckload and be set for a year or six months or whatever, uh, that's been really good for me and that's worth paying more and cost of goods sold because that helps keep my profit per hour higher, which is what's most important to me right now. Um, so operating expenses, no employees, not doing any marketing. I guess this could be $8 for my domain name, but I think I put that in other expenses. 
um, the supplies. This is all your top loaders, um, boxes, shipping labels, yada yada yada. Um, some of these supplies I actually sell at the at the antique mall booth too. So some of that those supplies numbers could be cost of goods sold, but that's okay. It's close enough. Um, but yeah, so we can see operating income. This is an estimate on taxes. It's gonna vary depending on uh, what, how much the total income is for the year. So I just use fifteen percent as like a baseline, but it's usually it would probably go up higher depending on how much income from everything. Um, so yeah, so a little under ten grand in profit from selling <laughs> seventeen thousand plus cards. So not not that great. And you figure I'm probably spending an hour. Uh, to two hours a day, depending. When I was doing singles, it was closer to an hour. Nowadays, I either spend zero, <laughs> I, I don't spend any time on eBay in the cards, or I spend like 10 minutes to 30 minutes to ship orders um, when I get orders in. So it, it's been a dramatic improvement in profit per hour. But let's say like when, when I had the 100,000 listings, it would be about an hour to ship, and then I might spend a few minutes listing, you know, another 50 to 100 cards to replace the ones that sold. But let's just say two hours a day on average. If we take this and we divide it by uh, two hours a day. So if we take it, divide it by three, two times 365, that's the number of hours. Let's just use that as an estimate to work out what an hourly profit rate is. $13 an hour. Um, and this can go up if you spend less time, if you get more efficient, you have better tools and equipment, or it goes up if you have a cheaper cost of goods sold. But yeah, I just wanted to, to show this reality because I don't think a lot of people recognize just how little you make per hour when you're doing the singles. Um, and this is why the lots are so attractive to me because if I sell 100 vintage cards for $1.99 shipped, and then let's say they all miraculously sell quickly, um, you're making you're making like forty dollars an hour roughly I think for picking packing and shipping those um, but if I sell those same 100 vintage football cards as a lot of 100 and I list them all in one shot and then someone comes and buys that lot for let's say sixty dollars they're getting a hundred and forty dollar discount versus buying each of those cards for two dollars shipped um, and I'm getting about $420 an hour in profit for the five-ish minutes total that it takes to list those and then pick, pack, and ship. So by switching from singles to lots, and, and you can check this out in my other videos where I, I break down the numbers a lot more, uh, but making that change basically gave me a 10 times a 10x raise per hour. So I think in 2024, since this will be my first full year just only doing lots, I, I think we're going to see a really dramatic increase in profit per hour. I've already seen it um, as this first quarter kind of wraps up. Uh, but it's absolutely insane. It's the best way to sell low-end singles. It's, it's the only way that you can really, I think, scale it up and make it a serious income without all this extra expense and time going into it. Uh, but I just wanted to point this out because I think a lot of low-end, high-volume sellers ignore this reality. They're not tracking their expenses properly. They're not tracking their equipment. They're not tracking their time. A lot of these people are wildly inefficient. And at the end of the day, if you're not tracking the time and you're not tracking the income and the expenses like this, then you you just you're clueless you're just going by emotions because what, what would i guess if i looked at this if i looked at 50 grand i'd be like oh i did 50 grand sales well i got like a 30 percent margin so i must have made like 20 grand or something that would be my guess if i didn't see the numbers uh but the truth is actually no you're making like 10 <laughs> so you need to do this kind of uh, tracking with any business that you're running just so that you can keep yourself honest and keep yourself grounded in reality and know what's working and what's not because if I ignored these numbers, um, I could, would just be selling singles still and just have no clue. <laughs> just be doing it for fun and think, well, maybe someday people will buy more than one card at a time. <laughs> uh, but since I've been tracking this stuff, 
in 2023, I literally dedicated like the first eight, nine months of the year to trying to figure out ways to get more people to buy multiple cards so that the profit per hour was worth it. And I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't crack that code. If anybody knows the secret, let me know in the comments. Um, but the reality is, even when I would run a buy one, get one free coupon for any card in my store with 100,000 cards in the store, people either did not care enough to go and find a second card to get for free or they didn't know that the coupon existed or how to use the coupon to take advantage of it. Because even with buy one, get one free coupon, more people would buy just one card than use the coupon. <laughs> so if I had 10 orders come in, one or two orders might have gotten their free card and then the other eight just ordered one card. Madness. It's crazy. It's crazy. And there's people on eBay who don't even understand how the eBay shopping cart works. So there, there's a whole lot of improvement I think eBay could do and that we can do too partially as sellers to try to teach people how to use uh, eBay and take advantage of the coupons and the deals and stuff is going to help us get more sales as sellers and, and probably help eBay too which is also good for us uh, but yeah that's the, that's my income statement this is what it looks like um, ask me anything if you want um, in the comments I respond, respond to all of them this year I'll have to after this first quarter I think I'll, I'll try to take the time to do another video real quick and show you what the difference is between lots versus singles in terms of profit per hour because it it's insane it's insane the contrast i think what, compared to these numbers is going to blow your minds when you see this um but anyway thanks for watching and i'm gonna i'm gonna try to do more videos too i'm working i'm still working on the web app for lots so anybody else who wants to do lots like me that web app is taking a lot longer than i had hoped i was a little naive <laughs> Um, but I'm still working on it. I can't wait to get that out. And um, once that's done, I'm going to be cranking out a lot more lots and doing some more eBay stuff and continuing to do these little experiments with, uh, you know, from the operation standpoint and also from kind of like the sales and marketing standpoint. But stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.